That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. There we go. Wa alaikum salam wa Sayyidi, your teachings are so helpful. Every day one of my questions is answered, alhamdulillah. Just requesting your special du'as for the people and the government of our country. I share your content, but a lot of people have very bad experiences or impressions about tariqahs. How, do, how does one explain the importance to someone who is not so ready to listen, however they question to be convinced persuasively? You know what, I think that Whatever experience people have is Allah giving uh, the way is based on taste. So it means you can only understand good food if you've eaten a lot of bad food. Because what are you going to compare good with? So a seeker their life is to seek. So it's not something that falls into your lap because people now everybody is like drive through They're expecting it's just going to come to them and life is about seeking, salik, that they went. So the analogy because the reality is a taste, you taste the reality, it's just not only charming to your ears but it resonates to the depth of the heart. And it's exactly what I was hungry for. So Allah put the hunger in my heart and He put the desire to seek out its nourishment. So I would listen to people, that's not what I was hungry for. Listen to something else, that's absolutely not what I was hungry for. So the hunger has to be there, otherwise just giving you, you know, prime food and you're not hungry, you don't know what to do with it. So the concept of a salik, one whom truly Allah guides is puts a desire now go out and seek a reality. So they've had experiences, they've had dreams, they have had many th things that gave them a taste and now they need to find where is that, where is that oasis and, and where am I going to take and reach to that taste. So if somebody is not in that condition it's not a plate that we make and we just keep giving to people. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. People, they're not a sonic. Allah didn't put in their heart to seek anything. So what do they know of what's good or bad? So that's why we don't sort of take the plate and force everybody to eat it. Don't go to your relatives and say, now okay you have to follow this and do like this. We just ask people to share the teachings, share the, the charity website, share the articles, share videos. Not only to your relatives that may come back and keep trying to argue with you, but to unknown sources, groups, chat groups, social media groups that are posting you know thousands, just continuously blanket. Imagine in, in the old days they would put flyers in an airplane, they would go in the sky and drop 30,000 flyers and they took over countries like that. Where all of a sudden one day everybody got a flyer that there's a revolution, that's called marketing. Well we can do that through the internet, you know thousand, two thousand good students posting every day is thousands and tens of thousands of posts. 
because they get shared by one person, two people, ten people, five hundred people, get seen by five hundred people. So you can imagine how quickly the word gets out. So my son told me, oh there's all these ethnic guys, Iranian, Afghani guys, they've all seen your videos and they keep coming up to me and say, who's this, is this your dad? I said, why, how do they see it? And you know YouTube because of our comments and because of the algorithm of our people making comments, you're, you're training their computer to think, oh this shaykh's videos, uh, people like to interact with him. So that's exactly what they want is interaction. So anyone with ethnic background, Muslim background watches some other Muslim channel inevitably will receive the feed because this is how you play with their algorithm. That's why we ask our people get on every video and make your nice comments, I, I watched it, I, I, these are my notes from it, interact. It's a classroom, one you get the nazar of these eyes of the shaykhs and all who are above them telling them to, to teach like this. So we get the nazar and we get it written for us that we interacted and that we promoted and as a result this algorithm goes everywhere. So this is what we mean by spreading da'wah but for the individual salik and seeker of realities they've sat many places and had horrific food. You know I've sat with people saying things I could never imagine and, is, and then I never asked Allah why? I always knew that if I don't taste these things how would I understand the beatific oasis that Allah led me to and continues to lead us because I continue to hear and see these things and believe like who tr trained this man to talk like this, to argue with this person, to insult this person. Then you know they don't have a shaykh and then somebody who has a shaykh how Allah means that you're truly guided because everything that man talks about has no reward from Allah. So then he's wasting, he may look back 20 years of his life of arguing and debating on, on social media and find out that Allah threw all his actions away. And whom Allah guides, truly guides is you know when you're guided is when you're guided to these gentlemen, these chivalrous men of Allah who taught to have good character, be kind. Be loving, be humble, fearful that what you got of knowledge is not to debase and to destroy people but to uphold and to lift people, inspire people. And all those people who feel inspired you go to bed sleeping good. Ya Rabbi I may myself be in distress but all those people who feel good and if you're happy with what I did send me a relief to myself, my family and my loved ones and my community. So it means our whole system is based on this, this way of good manners but you don't understand good manners until you've seen people with bad manners. Whether they call themselves tariqah, whether they call themselves imams, whether they call themselves uh, shaykhs, doesn't matter. Just like bad food doesn't mean you're not going to eat anymore. So anybody who gives these ridiculous examples, oh we've had a lot of bad experience, well it's like food, did you stop eating? No even if you get salmonella poisoning you're going to go back to eating chicken even if you for a month say, I'm never going to eat chicken again because I got so sick from this, eventually you're going to go back to it. So you don't give up eating, these are sort of life's functions. Same with tariqah, realities and Islam, you never give up on it. You just have to reach the oasis that you're meant for, that you drink from it you feel nourished, you eat from it you feel nourished. You don't need to sit at somebody else's oasis when you feel you're being nourished. There are people who say, I joined such a group such and such doesn't matter but I never hear from them, I never even hear talk. They speak only fluent Arabic, I don't speak Arabic. Well I think maybe you were at the wrong group. And you entered to the wrong oasis, maybe somebody led you that, there to think that that's your oasis but your oasis has to be in your language. Means that you have to understand what this shaykh is talking about, that it resonates with your heart. If you don't hear him you've… the law, first function is already lost. Our way is called samina watana, means I heard and I obeyed. 
if I don't have the capability of hearing this individual speak, how can it resonate with my heart? So it means you were just sent to, you know, to taste something, you were interested by it. Was it meant for you? No. You have to go to where your garden, your meal is something that is palatable for yourself. Means you understand what the shaykh is talking, you have a, a way of communication with the shaykh. Do you need to call him? Absolutely not. How could he possibly handle tens of thousands of phone calls coming in that never want to get off the phone, they just want to keep talking. So the system of communication is very easy now, I talk this way through tens of thousands of people. If they want to talk back they can ask on the open forum if it resonates with everybody and appropriate for everybody or help me at nurmuhammad.com. They email their questions, whatever their concerns and we already have, you know this is not the first time we've done this, 35 years there are form letters that address all of these subjects. How to meditate, how to connect, how to get your ta'weez, how to have energy, there's nothing new under the sun. Nobody has a story that's new, they just have new facts that are based on their own personal experience which yeah, actually the facts don't matter. You don't have to explain how you know all of the functions of the family and all the difficulty is straight away goes straight into a anger and patience. So the facts are, are not necessary, who did, what did, who's to blame, that's not necessary. It's only the, the energy and how to protect ourselves from the energy, how to have good manners. So no, the system is already there and that is about and that is the reality of being Salik is I'm on a path to seek out. I'm going to come across many flavors that are absolutely not pleasant to me and the one that resonates with my heart and my soul it locks. And for Mawlana Shaykh the resonance of the teaching that was finished, that, that locked us. Anything else we heard was of no interest whatsoever, it just didn't mean anything, it didn't lock into the heart, it was like eating just sort of air. But when we eat from what resonates within the heart because knowledge is, is like a ta'am, it's like a food for the soul. When, you, when you're nourishing your soul, you know it, your soul knows it. I don't know if your ego knows it that many times the ego tries to deny it but it's there, it can't be not denied so that's why they say follow the heart, the true heart, the one that through contemplation and meditation and, and not the lustful heart where people just want to do anything through their heart. The heart has to be conditioned and trained and disciplined. Now they have medical proof that the heart actually has brain, neural lights. Hmm? Neural lights they said, there's cells in the heart called neural lights and they said they have 40,000 of these cells inside the heart similar to the cells in the brain that give the brain the capacity to think and to produce a thought and then produce re and a reaction into the body. So ancient philosophies they thought the heart made all the commands for the body. So they were right. So these neural lights, nur in their heart has its own brain and that becomes all the teaching. Why are you using this brain to understand the heavens? When in reality we were supposed to turn the neural lights and turn the brain of the heart on, that heart would communicate with the head. The heart would teach the head because the heart is the master unit and the head was supposed to be the slave unit. You know in computers there's a master unit sending out commands, kunun amr and Laylatul Qadr, Surat Al Qadr is a direction for the heart. وَدَرُّوا مَلَائِكَةَ وَرُّوا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ كُلِّنْ أَمْرٍ سَلَامٌ هِيَا حَتَّى مَتَّى الْفَجْرِ means this command is coming from the heart, then it sends the command to the brain. But shaitan knows that so he flipped people, So don't use the brain of your heart, use this brain. But this is the most dangerous one, this was supposed to be the companion 
this was supposed to be the master. And that's why Allah anciently taught all the Prophets, Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah that I reside within your heart not your head. So how are we going to open up the brain of the heart? Well by contemplating, meditating and to understand my consciousness. Instead of spending all your time educating the brain of your head, educate the brain of your heart. Read on, on knowledges of the heart, the, the food and the sustenance that the heart desires is, is the realities of light and soul. When it reads those knowledges you're illuminating the brain of your heart, the knowledge of your heart. So do you see how the world is now? The ones whom illuminate their head their heart is retarded, literally retarded people because they think so much in their head, they don't think anything of the heart. They think, oh I'm a scientist and nothing the heart doesn't exist but now the real sciences are all coming out because it's the last days. So what happens is in Allah's presence they're retarded, they never reached maturity, they, they use the wrong faculty and what Allah gave them as a reward? Alzheimer's. What we described in the talks, what was Alzheimer's? That all the energy of your head that you keep trying to do all your thought processes and energy processes, you're actually your neuroceptors in your head become fried, the circuits become burned and by old age they can no longer think, they forgot everything. And that wasn't, that wasn't the brain they were supposed to activate. So Allah's way was that teach your children from youth activate their heart. Meditate, contemplate, make your salah, make your prayers, illuminate with Islamic knowledges that the foundation of every knowledge is to glorify God Almighty Allah That becomes the source of the brain of a heart. Once the heart becomes illuminated and open what happens? It sends now an energy and begins to teach. The brain, you are my student, you listen to me, these are the isharat and the guidance coming. So their brain is retarded, they shut their brain off, illuminated souls and begin to teach the brain that you listen to the knowledges I give you and you become an obedient servant of my command. And that's why the first zikr of every tariqah La ilaha illallah, they send the energy of la, la means no, la to the head, ilaha the other divinity illallah but Allah. So means the first zikr matches the first reality that your heart has to be activated. The brain of your heart means understanding your consciousness, your higher consciousness, your purpose, why were you sent upon this earth. I even saw an alien movie all about your way of thinking is wrong. Oh humans you think on linear and you think only from a material plane but this is not the reality of awliya and the way that they kept the way of Prophet They think from their heart which has no confines of time and space. As a result they can see into the future, they understood the past and they have power from the presence. And the movie was teaching in the alien movie how to open that. But this is all the teachings from Prophet that open the brain of your heart means understand the consciousness, your purpose, your energy. Well Shaykh how am I going to do that alone? You're not supposed to, وَكُنُوا مَا أَصَادِقِينَ Have taqwa, itaqullah and then Allah's order from Qur'an, keep the company of sadiq, of truthful servants, truthful in their deed and in their actions. Truthful in keeping the company not in the physical plane but keep their company in the world of light. So how do I keep the company in the world of light? By connecting my heart with them, visualizing that from your station in the world of light 
that led me to connect with you. The, you have authority and light, I'm nobody. I ask that you be with me and be present with me. And shaitan is present with you, so who has more power? The awliya. Because shaitan had to ask permission for power from Izzatullah, Izzat al Rasul, wa Izzat al Mu'mineen. Shaitan Allah gives the, the power source of shaitan in Qur'an is that he asked Allah, I need a power and Allah gave that you have from bi'ithnillah by the permission of Allah you have from the izzat of Allah izzat al rasul wa izzat al mu'mineen meaning what? That by command of Amr uh, ulul amr shaitan is allowed to operate. If they give a command shaitan is moved out, shaitan cannot function in their field of energy because it's by their permission. And I say, well oh, I have all these shaitanic attacks, well means the ulul, 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 ulul amr have not given a permission to relieve you of that. They want to see the fight, they want to see all the practices. But don't doubt the shaitan has no power, his power source is this power pack. He has to take from Izzat al-Mu'mineen. So means then this authority has to be unlocked into the heart of the believer, that they have to open this reality in their heart, they have to be present with their shaykh, that the fires and the energies of the shaykh have to come because Izzat al-Mu'mineen has to come. So how can I fight off shaitan when there's no mu'mineen who will sign off for me? Because we just said shaitan is authorized to fight you, is authorized to come with that power and begin to attack somebody. So, but why won't the attack stop? So where's the mu'mineen that will say, no more? Huh? So those who don't have a mu'mineen, they don't have ulul am, they don't have a shaykh guiding them. In this surah, in this month Allah gives what? Your guidance whom Allah guides has waliun murshidun, waliun murshidun. When they say, well, well who says there's awliya in Qur'an? Allah says in Surat Al-Kahf, whom I guide, I guide, whom I don't guide they don't have a waliun murshidun, a murshid who gives guide, guidance and who has wilayat. Means what? That his hand reaches, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul adheem. The wali, his hand reaches the oceans of power. So then on this side of shaitan what happens? If the izzat al-mu'mineen that flowing to the permission of that shaitan, if Allah give a command that this servant no more, he's mukhlis. Means what then? Those mu'mineen whom are guarding that servant immediately cut the power of shaitan to approach him. The shaitan has no field of energy to even come near him. So means this is immense. That's why they have to connect with these mu'mineen. You're going to need them one day or another. One day you wake up and see the whole world is being attacked, people are under satanic attack and how are you going to fend off and fight that attack? When they're taking from this might and they take from this ocean of permission. So then tariqah comes and teaches, make your connection. Begin to open the heart and educate your heart which is your true brain. Now we have doctors in our audience, neural light. They didn't have the function and the receptors to think, to produce a thought, to send a command. And that's why Surat al-Qadr describes the sun but in reality it's the heart of the believer because the heart of the believer is more powerful than the sun. Every am comes to the angel and the ruh. The ruh is the purified light of Satan. 
Muhammad in the heart of these ulul amr. It comes with the, the permission of Allah and every command comes from the fields of energy into their heart and gives every guidance to every cell within their body. Like the Wi-Fi signal, now they're going to introduce wireless electricity. But they'll be, they'll be powering everything with no wires. Only at that time you'll understand what is the, the greatest field of energy that has no wires, Allah's izzah and might. When we say, La hawla wa la quwwata, there is no help and there is no power except in this understanding and reality. If you want the help and the power of Allah well what are you going to put your hand on? Allah? Where will that be? No, that's why you have to have your hand on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad to reach to the hand of Allah Inna ladina yubayyunuka yubayyunullah But where am I going to find the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad on this earth? And these are the Muhammadiyoon wa ulul amri minkum. The amr that they follow the spiritual physical commands of Sayyidina Muhammad You would figure then the ulul amr which they have a alif, meem, ra, they're under the izzat and might of alif, they're under the izzat and might of meem of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the izzat and might of the mu'mineen who are Rabbaniyoon. That they are lordly souls, they learn the book, they taught the book. Means that these ulul am then our, our life forces on this earth, our life is to be connected to their hand. And when we're connected strong into their hand that our life and death is in their hand and we understand that flow only at that time can shaitan be pushed away. If shaitan is coming the hand is not strong, the testing has to be increased, the understanding has to be understood because if you got like one finger off that one finger off is enough for shaitan to come in. So means that's the whole concept of this understanding is that, that hold tight, tafaragan don't separate. As soon as you separate shaitan has grabbed you. Because there's no time to separate and put your hand somewhere else. He's already on your feet holding trying to grab you. You think the minute you separate he gives you permission now to go grab somebody else's hand, find them and see who you're going to be with? Why Allah then it says in the bayat that don't break your bayat and your connection, you break it to the detriment of your own soul. When a shaykh passes they send the authority of that reality so that the connection never changes. So means these are all the, the in-depth reality of tafakkur and contemplation. So as soon as they sit with the shaykhs they're connecting, they're opening their heart, they're making powerful connections. These connections deauthorize shaitans because the shaitan is by permission of Allah to test this creation. Now the shaitans that want to appear and these aliens that want to appear and these jinns that want to appear, how are they going to come after people? They're coming to eat people, not educate people, not teach people, nothing of humanitarian purpose. Their only interest is to come and destroy. The good ones, the mu'min ones they have no permission to interfere. So means how are they going to, to protect people is that your hand has to be connected to the izzah and might of Allah izzat al rasul wa izzat al-mu'mineen. By the izzat and might of that connection they are not authorized to come after these souls. And the spiritual hayba and spiritual protection that is illuminates their soul from every direction which are armed forces of spiritual beings all around them. At that time they will manifest and they show their presence. 
any alien force, jinn force, reptilian force, any of these creatures in their shaykh and their form that wish to invade a space, they'll be astonished at what type of armies guard these souls. That Allah's izzah and might and, and magnificence is un, unseen and un, understood. But they're not left empty and they're not left alone. These forces stand and wait the command of the ulul amr and they all around the families of these believers whom they are destined to be with Sayyidina Mahdi whom is the authorized command for all these forces upon the earth. All these sultana jinn have given their allegiance. And this is the heavenly qudra that flows upon this earth and they stay in wait, waiting for this command. So I mean this is not an empty earth where no, they don't know what's happening. The shows and movies they, they make is a small sign of what they understand. But the, the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad is the king of all created universes. Every other supposable kingdom will be laid to waste in what they understand. Just by the virtue of the shaitans that they're dealing with, they have no way of protecting themselves from what they have brought upon themselves and upon their lives. This is the izzah and might of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah will show to glorify the reality of Prophet means it's a very knowledgeable nation, very powerful nation and heavenly power is like water. You don't see it, you enjoy it but God forbid if it ever activates you feel it, inshaAllah. Was that a question? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Ta'ala Just wanted to say shukran for a miraculous tariqah healing upon one of my family members through a spiritual connection with you. May Allah bless you eternally. Allah bless you. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah As it was mentioned that the stations of the Prophets are inheritable and there is someone representing them on earth, does the same also happen for the family of Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt? That's the whole structure of awliya. That's why the, when you believe in the Muhammadan kingdom the seat of the king is never empty, right? That as soon as the king travels someone has to sit in that position to continuously give guidance. The, the, the kingdom doesn't shut down so, oh the king he's travelling right now so we're not uh, making any decisions where the government would collapse. So when the king travels there's one whom sits in the position of authority. The tariqahs are separate. So people are in tariqahs and they're giving all their shaykhs big titles from the government which is not true. They don't necessarily go back and forth. The tariqahs are finishing schools for candidates to be sent to the Muhammadan government but not necessarily all. Some are as students in a tariqah hidden in a corner and they may be big awliya in the Muhammadan government. But they don't have any position in the tariqah, they're not orators, they're not leading, they're nothing. They're hidden, they're not nothing, they're something but they take a role that's hidden. So it means it was just a school of dhikr and tarbiyah. Then the Muhammadan kingdom with the ghawth represents the king. The Qawd has a presence always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad He has one face always in the presence of Prophet and then one face to his government which are his kutubs, his 
budan, nujab, niqab, awtad wal akhyar, malaika wa jinn, a whole structure of government and the Ghawth deals with them. Was Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jailani the only Ghawth? Absolutely not, would they think the kingdom then ended at that point? But that station is uniquely to his reality that he gives the inheritance and the fires and the dress to any Qawth that is at this time sitting on that position. His fires and madad and uh, imdad, his support is for the living Qawth. So there must be a living Qawth at all times, there must be living Qutubs at all times and then all the different categories so it's like a pyramid. And this is for the entire created universe. So in our lifetime alhamdulillah our belief is that Sultanul Awliya, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, after that is not, not known, Imam Ali Salam holds the title. But under Sultanul Awliya he would always make clear that I'm not in charge of this pyramid, I'm in charge of all pyramids and that this pyramid has its own kutub. So means the earth was not the prize, they were in charge of Allah's created universe and Allah only knows what they gave them of authority. But He gives us a hint in Surat al-Yusuf right? When the Prophet of Bani Israel and Prophet described my awliya are what? Warith al-Anbiya are inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. So let's say one of the biggest Prophets of Bani Israel, Sayyidina Yusuf And what did he inherit? The sun, the moon and eleven planets were making sujood. Means he sat in an authority in which the sun is in his command, the moon is in his command, eleven planets are in his command, not Egypt only. And as a result he reached that station, his father who was a prophet bowed down and kissed his feet, that your station is immense. And what Prophet described of his ulama who are awliya, the mind are inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. So means that these awliya, these kutubs, they control these regions, these planets, these galaxies. Nothing, nothing is not under the dominion of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi samawati wa ma fil wa jamiya. We have subjected to you Prophet whatever is upon the earth and in the heavens Jamian and anything in between them, that anyone ever wants to come up with anything, souls, yes, angels, yes, planets, infinite. And Allah the Wajah says, they're all subject to you, the Sultan <coughs> So alhamdulillah this is the, this is the, the, the life of these realities. And Allah gave so many opportunities for us to, to reach towards these blessings and these realities and to connect to the Muhammadan kingdom, the Muhammadan government and uh, by understanding this kingdom and government you understand the important, importance of Milad the Nabi It's the celebration of the entire created universes and, and planets and galaxies that the Sultan's birth is, is the illumination across every plane and every galaxy for those whom are servants to the Sultan, whom they serve that realm and that reality. Those whom are renegades to the Sultan, well I'm sure they're not very happy with the birth of the king and his power, his izza, his might. So that's why it's an immense importance. But of course shaitan is not happy, those whom who represent a, a, a different understanding and continuously trying to fight the king, then they have their, their own trouble coming. And that's why we don't take guidance from them, we don't take any other belief from them, any understanding from them. They are renegades to the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as
So does the Tawbah in Muharram and entering the cave in Safar prepare the servants for the beatific Muhammadan month of Rabbi al-Awwal? Yeah, of course. Alhamdulillah because we enter this is the journey. So what happens on the, this month of Safar we're in the cave and then we describe Tawbah, Surah Tawbah at verse 40. The description of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq accompanying Prophet sent him into the cave we talked about last night. They entered into the cave and then Safar opened the cave with Ashab al-Kahf, Surat al-Kahf. And now all the manners will go now next week into Sayyidina Musa salam and Sayyidina Khid salam. So it means then in the cave what happens in Safar? That they're now in the Muhammadan heart. What's then the third month? of Rabbi al-Awwal, the third three times nine is twenty-seven. So why every celebration is on the twenty-seventh, Israhi wal Miraj, Laylat al-Qadr, why? Because now you're people of Marifa you know the, oh the twenty-seventh actually is the gates to the kingdom and that's why we enter in, in the secret of two and seven. So when we enter into 27, 27th surah is about the kingdom. But we won't go into that now but yes. And what do you get back in 27 that you didn't have in 9? Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. You entered Tawbah there was no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Because you didn't get the key for that, you didn't get the reward for that. But if you came into the cave of Prophet celebrated the Milad al-Nabi entered in to the 27th surah, then you saw the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman as a description, just a drop of the description of the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah inna huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa you know huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and that he is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So Allah is then giving a, the golden key of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem to the people whom love Sayyidina Muhammad So definitely Rabbil Awal is the gift for those whom believe and they love their king. Allah gives to them the golden key of realities within their heart. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem which opens every reality, it's the key of all eternity and only those whom have that love and ishq truly understand the, the power of that key and the 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So with that key they can open every haqqaiq, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yathifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. As Surat Al-Fatiha. As-salamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.